In the first video of this series, uh, I took a, I gave a quick overview of this zero delay USB interface with a quick build. I actually bought a pair of these off of Amazon. Really, really good value for money. Um, they also sell them as uh, single individuals as well. You can get them on eBay and in a variety of names and sellers, but really, really cheap. So in the second video of the series, I thought, let me take a closer look at the PCB and go through some of the basic options and then also try and investigate some of the more advanced options and uh, unpopulated components on this board, which are also quite interesting. So here's a real close-up of the exact board that I got. You can see over here, if we go through some of these connectors, on the top left, we had the USB interface, which is uh, connects to that four pin header with the provided wire. The next one over is if you have a SunWire joystick, you can connect it with a five pin ribbon cable directly beneath or between the joystick and this board, same connector on both ends. In lieu of that, of course, you can use those joystick connectors to the right. So you can have up, down, left, right directly uh, on this interface. Across the bottom, we have all our buttons. You can see it has a 12 button input support. I only used six in my build, but you can use as many as you like, uh, which is obviously a massive overkill to go all the way to 12, but it gives you all the possibilities you could possibly want. And on the right, there are a couple of interesting uh, additional buttons. The first is that mode button, which you can click and that'll toggle this entire board between digital and analog. This is basically what is the type of joystick that the OS detects um, that this is running. Now, Technically, this is always still going to be a digital joystick. It's just about what it is being used as. In its default mode, it's basically set to analog, I believe, but it's still just sending a zero or one signal to the joystick X and Y axis inputs. And if you toggle this to digital mode, it basically sends inputs to the hat input. If uh, And this is not on Windows, of course, which on the test program, you can separately see um, the joystick input and the hat input. I use a Mac, so I, I don't have a correlating app like that on, on my machine, and I probably won't be using this either. On the right-hand side, you can see there's also the abilities over here to set up turbo fire and auto fire. So basically, if I short these two pins for auto fire, then the, the fire button will be firing all the time. Um, that is for whichever uh, button I then press subsequently. So you have to select which button you want to be auto firing, and it will then continue to auto fire. Turbofire is similar, it's a subset thereof. So if you enable Turbofire by closing this button, then you'll see whenever I hold down any of these buttons, uh, it will continuously auto fire that button. That's probably what this uh, this crystal is for over here. I might be wrong, this crystal might be here just to power the entire chip, but my assumption is that it's here to power the auto fire. And then of course, this clear in the middle is to go and clear that turbo or auto fire functionality for that specific button. Um, I'm also not interested in using these all that much, uh, but that's what they're there for, uh, in case you'd like to use them for that build. What I wanted to spend some more time on, on this video, though, is what are some of these other mystery things? And let me see. Uh, I got I got further on, on some more than others. Uh, perhaps some people uh, out in YouTube land in the comments can tell me what the rest are for. But if we look over here, let me go one slide further. In the lower left, there's these two unpopulated 5 volt connectors where you can clearly see these are probably made for similar connectors to these and this mystery off which I want to delve into some more. There's also a place for another uh, diode over here or another LED with a nearby resistor that's unpopulated. On the top of the board there's place for another LED and also another corresponding resistor also not populated. And on the right of the board there's a whole bunch of what I've just labeled J jumpers J1, 2 and 3 and an area for a whole bunch of resistors. So let me see if I can figure out what some of these things do and what, what their intent was. If you flip the board over, you can see this is the exact same board, but from looking from the back. So I've gone and reversed all the labels. And what I then did is I tried to go and figure out exactly where the five volt lines go and where the ground lines go. So incoming five volt, as you can see, is coming here from the USB interface on this pin. Ground is on this pin over here. So let's use those to go and trace out what's happening. So this is 5 volt traced all the way around the back of the board. Now, fascinatingly, and I mentioned this in the first video as well, a lot of people mistakenly call the one end of this ground. But in actual fact, there's 5 volt coming directly from the 5 volt input of the USB interface. And when you close any of these buttons, you're effectively sending a 5 volt signal through each of these different address lines into this uh, glop top. I see over here, 
order for it to know which input is being uh, sent. So it's not ground-based, it's firebolt-based. Not that it really matters, but it's just uh, interesting to highlight that. Similarly, this is what the ground rail looks like over here. So you can see that there's a 5 volt and ground going into this IC. It's a bit of ground being used over here for some of these additional components as well. And there's some ground being used over here. Uh, more about this later. I then went and labeled all of the different signal lines. So you can see over here, this is for all the buttons, um, as well as those four. And then for the joysticks across the top, all going into the, into the IC over here. So let's look at some of these areas that we highlighted before. So I've just put all three of them together so that you can see 5 volt and ground, and in purple you see all the pads, the input pads. And here are the same yellow areas just flipped over on the back side of the board um, that I'd like to try and identify. So let's go in and take these one by one. The first one I'll do at the top left over here is this uh, diode which is labeled B4 on the board, which works in combination with this resistor. Now, this is interesting. This is just a straight up uh, power LED. Um, the board on the front already has a power LED, but the power LED on the front is actually coming through the IC. So you can see over here, that's actually one of these two over here where those LEDs are just connected to ground and the five or the signal goes through this resistor and it's coming from some kind of signal over here from this IC. This one is further upstream. So this is basically just uh, connecting straight to the 5 volt rail, it'll go through this diode, which is connected to this resistor, which was used to bring the voltage down from 5 volts down to a more usable, probably 1.2 volts, or 2 volts, depending on your LED. And then that connects, let me get my mouse back again here, back just to this ground rail. So this is just showing you, is there 5 volt coming in through this USB interface? You can light it up here. Whereas the power on the IC itself is actually coming through the IC. So I assume it might be related to the handshaking of the board. The board probably handshakes with the machine and then lights up the power or potentially just if the IC is alive, it passes through the power and, and then, then it lights up that power switch. So basically just downstream or in control of this particular IC. Here's a close up of that so you can clearly see. Five volt rail coming in over here along this trace, hops across here, then it'll go across the diode if it's installed. Then this trace takes me to the resistor, over to this pad over here, which is connected over here on this trace all the way to ground, and then we're back out of here. So very, very simple. Right, this mystery uh, section over here is quite interesting. So there's place for another diode beside, or LED, beside the two that are currently installed. Now those two are connected to some kind of signal uh, over here, and then they go across the resistor to bring that resistance back down, across the LED, and then straight to the ground rail. We, these are the two that I installed. One is installed here where my mouse is, and one is installed here. This one works in the reverse. So it actually have a, the, the five volt rail comes in, will go across this LED, then down to this resistor to drop that voltage down. But then it goes into some kind of uh, signal line here into the IC. So I have no idea what the purpose of this thing is, but it's definitely controlled by the IC for some other mode. Um, so I don't know, perhaps someone has figured this out. I don't know what this one is for, but it, it's definitely wired the other way around to what the other two are here. The next area is this lower right region, which is this off and five volt and five volt. And this is pretty interesting. Here you can just go and hang off any kind of accessory that you want. Let's take a little bit of a closer look. You see over here, you can see the five volt rail is coming in. Then it goes across this very small little trace. This is the area that's labeled off. There after it goes over here to this pad and to this pad. And these two pads over here are wired to ground. So basically, right now they're wired to be permanently 5 volt, but you can cut this trace, put a switch across here, and then you can have switchable 5 volt to these two accessories, whatever they are for. The way they are now, you can use them to light up some LEDs if you want to, or light up anything that runs off 5 volt, or you can cut them and make it switchable. So you can see that's where those pads are on the other side. Notice over here, yep, there's that off permanently wired, 5 volt and 5 volt. And in fact, I looked online and found some other variations of this board. And you can see they actually came with these two headers populated and in red, which is quite fascinating. Obviously directly for use for something 5 volt. And the off header is not populated this way. You have to cut the trace on the other side. But you could connect this to some kind of switch and switch whether or not this 5 volt is on or off. Now, previously I mentioned here's those other two diodes I was talking about earlier. This one just is connected directly to the 5 volt rail, so you can use that to have just a, a dedicated power. 
And this one is connected to the IC, which is sitting behind the letter S here on the other side, which I actually have no idea what this is for, but definitely works in conjunction with the resistor 11. The last ones I haven't been able to figure out, and I believe that there were previous versions of this board that were PS2 rather than USB. So maybe that was what that was for back in the day, but none of these resistors are populated and none of these jumpers are either. And I actually have not been able to figure out what these things are for, but they also connect into the IC as well. You can see the resistors, this half of the resistors are basically connected to the 5 volt rail. This half are grounded. Uh, uh, if they were connected across here, these are actually jumpered together. So I don't know what that is, maybe some kind of voltage regulation within uh, this IC over here, but definitely not being used anymore. So if anybody knows, please comment in the comments below. So yeah, definitely an interesting look at this IC and some of the things that are not currently being used. The basics, of course, are brilliant the, the way it is, and I'd be curious to hear from somebody that's used absolutely everything uh, on this particular board. But for just a couple of bucks, this was really a, a lot of fun to play with. So thank you very much for watching and uh, stay tuned for more videos.